Now from CBS 4 News, this is Facing South Florida with Jim DeFeedy. Good morning, I'm Jim DeFeedy, and welcome to Facing South Florida. There's an old saying, like father, like son. I'm not sure I completely believe that. While sons are shaped by their fathers, they are rarely mirror images of them. Unless, of course, your last name is Trump. This morning, we sit down with two sons of politicians who have now risen to the positions their fathers once held. Francis Suarez is the new mayor of Miami. His father, Xavier Suarez, was Miami mayor from 1985 to 1993 and then re-elected for a brief period in 1997. Dan Gelber is the new mayor for Miami Beach. His father, Seymour Gelber, was the Miami Beach mayor from 1991 to 1997. Gentlemen, thank you for coming in. Glad to be here. Thanks so for having us. I want to talk to you both about, you know, the future of your cities, what your agendas are, what you want to do. But this, this notion of sons rising to the positions of their fathers, very, very Hemingway-esque, and I kind of <laughs> like it. Uh, and I want to start with you, Dan. And I guess the question I'm going to ask each of you is, you know, you came to it a little bit later. Your father came to politics a little later in life. He was a prosecutor, then a judge, then ran for Miami Beach mayor in the wake of a scandal in Miami Beach where Alex Dow, the former mayor, went to prison. He came in to clean things up. But again, it was later in life. You were running a few years later. What did you learn from your father in terms of politics? My father uh, and my mother were public servants. My mom was a teacher. My dad had that resume. And they just taught me to always try to do the right thing. And the best thing you can do is to sort of help your community. And everyone in my family sort of follows that role. Um, we have a calling to public service. I'm proud of it. I love my dad and I love my mom. Uh, my dad is my role model. He's my best friend and he's someone who I, I'd be very blessed to uh, emulate. And if, I, if, if I'm even close to the job he's done, I'd be very happy with my life. When you were watching him, when he was mayor. Yeah. Is there anything that you took from that experience other than just the, the notion of public service? Did you learn anything yes. in terms of what, what was it? My dad took a, a lot of positions where he just did what he thought was right, even if there were uh, potential and there were often sour political consequences. He always believed that if he just did the right thing and even if it upset somebody, uh, it's better than trying to please everybody. And you can't please everybody. And I think if that's your poll star, you're going to do very well in this job because Look, we're not, uh, and I know Francis pretty well, and I know he feels the same way. You don't take this job to, uh, to just to be loved. You take this job to do something that you think is important. And I feel like that's what my dad taught me. Uh, Francis, I want to turn, or turn to you. Your dad was the first Cuban-American, yep. Cuban-born mayor of Miami. I think he was, was he 36 or 35? He was 36. Was How old are you now? I'm 40. So, so he still beats you on that. He got me. He, he got still me. gets you on yeah. that one. Yep, yep. But when you were growing up, he was heavily involved in politics. So as a child, you saw him in that role. Talk to me about what that was like growing up in that household. So I was eight years old uh, when he was elected in 1985. Actually, when he first ran in 1979, I was actually two years old. And my yeah. first uh, political commercial was sitting on his lap saying, vote for my dad, please. <laughs> so I got involved in politics at a very young age myself. But uh, I got to see him. He walked door to door back, in, back when walking door to door actually meant and going door to door. Nowadays, you know, there's quality of voters and, and, and it's more scientific, but he was literally going door to door. And, and when he started in politics in 1979, no one knew who he was. And he ran three times unsuccessfully before he was elected in 1985 and defeated a 12-year a mayor um, to become, like you said, the first uh, Cuban mayor in the city of Miami. He was uh, twice reelected in 85 and 87 and, and 89, I'm sorry, yeah, 85, 87, 89, he was three times reelected and, uh, and was mayor until 1993. And so I was from when I was eight years old to when I was 16 years old. It was sort of my whole entire adolescence. So I grew up uh, definitely being the mayor's son in, 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 a, in a life where that was kind of a little bit of a weird a time in your life when that's kind of a little bit of a weird thing to be. Did you say to yourself, I want to do that? At all. I did not. Not at all? Not at all. I mean, I, I, I grew up, um, you know, seeing the highs and lows of politics, uh, not necessarily at that time of my life as, a, as an adolescent, um, really thinking that this is what, what I, my, my life would have been materialize into, um, you know, and I, I, I kind of backed into politics, if you will, you know, I got married, I bought a home, I started paying taxes, I got, you know, I was a victim of, a, of, of crime, um, and started getting involved in my community little by little. There's certainly the seeds of, of, of public service, just like uh, Mayor Gelber said, uh, just like Dan said, you know, those were all 
all sort of germinating inside of me. But uh, but it wasn't something that I thought I was going to do for the rest of my life. You, you mentioned, you know, you saw the highs and lows. Yeah. You, you, your dad was controversial at times. Right. You know, I mean, he went from being Mayor Potholes in, right. the, in the 80s, and then some people referred to him, he had the moniker of Mayor, Mayor Local in the 90s, and he ran in 97, and the election got overturned, and it was a weird thing right. with Joe Carroyo. Right. So you saw how the press can also be mean and vicious. Sure. And did that not, I'm amazed that didn't <laughs> turn you off in some extent. Well, it did turn me off, you know, at the time. And I think what happens is over time, you start building your own identity. You know, you're an adult. You, like I said, you got to pay taxes. You have to be a part of, the, of society. And, you know, when, when I was 30 years old, uh, the, the commissioner from my area, Tomas Regalado, decided to run for mayor. Um, uh, I was sort of a young professional, uh, married, didn't have children yet. And, uh, and I thought, you know, if I'm, you know, I didn't want to live in Regretsville, you know, and I thought if I'm going to serve the public, um, now is a good time and, and this is a good opportunity. And so I spoke it over with my wife and my business partner, decided it was a good time to run and barely got elected. I won by uh, 260 votes uh, in a runoff. Well, let me ask both of you too. Sometimes so some people may be at home watching this and going, this is the problem with politics in Miami. It's too many dynasties. You've got the Diaz de Gobertias, there's Carroyo brothers, there's Regalados, there's now Gelbers and Suarez's. Should, isn't, isn't, isn't politics better if you have new people coming into the system? How, what would you say? Well, well, first of all, my dad was mayor uh, decades ago, yeah. so I'm not quite sure we... He, or dynasty, he, you're not, not quite sure a dynasty. He, I'm not sure he handed me the baton unless it's been in the air for 20 years. Um, listen, I think that what's important are ideas, and, it, and there are generational differences. I mean, I think there's no question that our cities are in different positions than they were when our, when our dads were the mayors of them. And we're different than our fathers at that moment. So it's really about sort of a moment in time. What do you believe the future of your city is and who are you and how can you help lead your residents and your colleagues on a commission? And so I think that's what's important. And I, I, don't, I don't know that we're, uh, I'm, we're certainly not a dynasty. Uh, um, Although I, your daughters, they could. No, no, that's true. Yeah. I, uh, my, especially my middle child, Anna. Uh, she's ready to take over uh, the reins tomorrow. But, uh, you know. Well, I want to I want just pick up on that, yeah. talk a little bit about that. But also, the, the, I think you raise an interesting point yeah. about the differences of your cities. Miami of the 80s is far different sure. than the Miami of, of 2017. Yeah, so my son's four. I don't think he's going to be running. Uh, <laughs> anytime soon. No, look, my, you know, my dad was mayor, like you said, when he was 36 to 44. I'm 40 now. I mean, this was a, a whole different generation. And certainly the city is, is diametrically different to what it was in the 80s and early 90s. Uh, but look, I have no problem with people who are running who are not from, you know, political families. My father wasn't from a political family when he ran in 1979. He was the first guy to run in his family, so I think it's I think what's vibrant about our democracy is is that we get to choose who our leaders are, and so that doesn't always happen everywhere in every country in the world. And so for me, you know, as as, as Mayor Gilbert said, you know, this is about ideas, this is about a vision, this is about executing, and it's about also serving with integrity. And I think that's why I'm, I'm I feel very blessed uh, to have a, a good friend on the other side of the causeway that do is they, a good example for me. Last thing I just want to ask about this, and then we'll talk, start talking some issues. Do they uh, do your fathers both give you? Lots of advice, and how much of it do you take, and how much of it do you just sort of like, okay, Dad? Um, I, my dad does give me a lot of advice. He's 98, <laughs> so a lot of it. Uh, a lot of wisdom. A lot, there's a lot of wisdom there, but the truth of the matter is, uh, he, he gives a lot of macro advice about doing the right thing, about taking your time, about thinking about how you comport yourself, those kind of things. No, my dad gives me advice as well, you know, and certainly he gives me sometimes inspirational quotes and and, and things that I can. Your use. dad is an inspirational quote kind of guy. He is an inspirational quote kind of guy, but. Uh, uh, he's now a county commissioner for those who don't know. Yeah, right? yeah, he's a county commissioner, but you know, he we have different styles, we have different personalities. Um, like you said, he's someone uh, who is, I think, a little bit more ideological. I would say that I'm a little bit more pragmatic, um, and that's just a different approach. I do have some of my mother's personality, yeah. and uh, right. yeah, well, you forgot about the mothers. Yeah. What is it with you? Well, <laughs> fathers and sons. Uh, the mother thing is an Oedipal thing. We'll say for another day. All right, but so uh, Francis, let me start with you. We'll start here, and then we'll continue it after the break. But what's the biggest goals that you have? set forth for your city? So, you know, our city is, is it's, it's a tale of two cities. Uh, we're dealing with incredible growth on the one hand, and we're also uh, struggling with the poverty pandemic on the other hand, and that breaks down on the cost side into two major things, affordable housing, we have the second most expensive uh, rental market as a percentage of income in the nation, and also transportation and mass transit. You know, uh, the, this county is growing explosively, and we haven't really invested in transportation infrastructure, infrastructure to keep up with that growth. On the income side, uh, we have to make sure that the promise of tomorrow reaches every citizen in our city. We have a lot of poverty. I want to talk to you more about this. I want to get in, but I want to just big picture goals. What are you, what are you planning for?
from Miami Beach. Well, we have to deal with our, resi our resiliency challenges and our street level rise and things like that and, and climate change issues. But I also think we have to define who we are in the world. And I believe if this is our Basel week, um, we are defining ourselves, I think, as a cultural and arts destination, uh, which is something that I'm looking uh, really forward to because I think it adds to not simply the economy, but to the elements that are available to our residents and gives us an ability to define who we want in our city and what we want to be doing and what kind of city we are. And, and this week has been terrific uh, as people come here to celebrate arts and culture. All right, let's take a break here. When we come back, I want to drill down on each of those things and talk to you more. We'll be right back after the break.